Boris Malone, hello. How does it feel to be performing at Classic FM Live tonight? It's very exciting to be here at Classic FM Live. I've performed at the Royal Albert Hall very many times, but never actually playing the piano. So this is really special tonight. And do you have one word that you can sum up the Royal Albert Hall in? It's just so grand. It's, it's really extraordinary. There's such a sense of history here and you're aware that so many people have enjoyed concerts here many, many times. Do you remember your first concert ever? I came here as a kid. I think I must have been about eight years old to see one of, one of the big sort of family children's concerts with my school. And I remember them introducing us to the crumb horn. And I've never forgotten the sound of the crumb horn since that day. But I just remember being completely overwhelmed. I was up in the, up in the gods and just thinking this is the most amazing place I've ever been. An important question, what is your essential pre-concert snack? I always, always eat very, very well before a concert. I'm just, I shovel in the sandwich right as I, at 7.25, just right before I go in, because the last thing you want is to be hungry in a concert. All right, what about a quick round of would you rather? Coffee or tea? Uh, I always have coffee, um, but not in the evening. So, mm, tricky, tricky. Uh, nice cup of tea. Stay in or go out? For me, I'm now going to be 44 this year, so it's more stay in than go out. Understandable. Playing or conducting? I, I love to play, actually. So, conducting is great fun. I only do it as a means to an end. I don't consider myself to be a real conductor. Um, I'm a sort of all-round musician. I love to play. Tough question, Eric Whittaker or John Rutter? For me, as much as I admire the great John Rutter and, and I owe him uh, my enthusiasm for choral music, those books that he wrote and, and edited uh, were part of my childhood, Eric Whittaker is the new face of classical music for me. And would you rather lose your hair or lose your singing voice? Ha! <laughs> I would rather lose my hair, although I have plenty of it at the moment. I'd rather lose my hair than my singing voice because I know, just, just the ability to ah! is uh, something I hold very dear. <laughs> and would you rather be tone deaf or never be able to read music ever again? Um, the idea of being genuinely tone deaf where you can't tell the difference, that you can't tell that a doorbell is two notes, terrifies me. So um, I think anything, anything other than that. So you're at the Royal Albert Hall. What's on your rider tonight? Um, I always have ginger beer on my rider. I like to arrive, find some fruit, a ginger beer, pretty simple, no alcohol, just focus, little meditation, little sleep, and then go out and do it. And what is your ultimate bucket list venue to perform at? I think I've ticked off so many great venues in, in my career so far, and this was, this was one. For, for years I dreamt of coming here and standing on this stage. Um, there's, there's plenty of places all around the world that I'd like to perform at, but there's something always really special about this venue. What might people not know about you? Um, I am... What do people not know about me? I think, I think that uh, because when I first came to public attention, people said, you know, choir master Gareth Malone, I got very much sort of pigeonholed, that's all I do. And I, I do other things. I, do, I compose, and I'll be playing two of my own pieces tonight. I play the piano, I play the bass guitar, I'm a bit of a sort of musical uh, uh, jack of all trades. Um, but, and that's where my heart lies, just, just sort of dipping my toe into lots of different things. And you are, you are definitely Britain's best known choir master. I, I like that you have said uh, Britain's best known choir master, but there are, I find, apart from outside classical circles, people can't usually name more than one. Um, but, you know, the television has really, really helped. And I've been very lucky to be part of some big national moments like the Queen's Jubilee and... Um, and of course the Military Wives we performed here in 2011, so I think I've become sort of synonymous with choirs for a lot of people, but um, there are better choir masters than me available. And Gareth, what's your favourite singing warm-up? My favourite singing warm-up um, is anything that just engages the breath and engages the muscles of singing. Singing is such a whole body experience, it has to come from a very deep place, so sort of breath exercises that... <sighs> really engage the lower core muscles. What about your best hack for singing when you've got a bit of a cold? Uh, my best hack for singing when you have a cold would be rest and drink water. That is the only thing that really works. You shouldn't sing if it hurts. Be very, very careful. I think, you know, potions, forget it. Maybe a bit of light steaming, but be very, very careful. Rest is the key. Can you describe Classic FM Live in one word? Um, 
I think this is going to be very shiny tonight. I think it's going to be a really amazing show full of incredible musicians. I'm, I'm honoured to be on the same stage as two wonderful, wonderful pianists, a great choir, a great orchestra. It's a very exciting event. That's the last question. Thank you very much, Gary. Can't wait for tonight. Cut.